Hi everyone, I'm instructor Diana Gonzalez, and today we're going to talk about inflation. As the word states, to inflate, we refer to increasing. So inflation is the increase in prices of consumer goods while the value of the dollar decreases. So we're going to go through an example that is very relevant to me. When I first started driving in 2010, the price of gas was $1.69 per gallon. Now in 2020, the price is like a summa cum laude GPA, it's $3.79 per gallon. Now, why such a large increase? Well, there are different factors that contribute to the increase in prices, such as supply and demand, but a common factor that is a constantly affecting the price increase is inflation. So today we're going to discuss how inflation affects consumer goods, how it affects us in our jobs, and how it affects the value of the dollar. To begin, we're going to explore the example that we covered in percentages. We had two types of tickets, one for ordinary seats and one for premium seats. In percentages, we discussed two important rules. One was the relative change formula and one was the absolute change formula. Using the relative change formula, we determined that the premium seats increased about 18% from 2003 to 2008. Now, something that we don't get to see in the graph is that this increase accommodates for inflation. So what we want to see is what is that true increase? Because the seats may have been worth $325 2008 or not, but no matter what, after years, the ticket prices should increase due to inflation. We're going to explore this to be able to answer the question of, if, is the increase that occurred on the premium seats going to be more or less than the increase applied to other items in the same time period? Now, to begin, we want to use the CPI inflation calculator. And to use this calculator, we can go to a link or we can Google. You're going to be using this on your homework, so let's, let's explore using this together. You can Google CPI inflation calculator. It's the first link. In this box, you're going to put the old value, so the price for the premium seats in 2003 and we want to change the year. Now here, what this calculator does is it'll tell us the worth of $275 from 2003 in 2008. And that is how we're getting this 319.47. So if an item was worth $275 in 2003, in 2008 it should be worth about $319.47. This is due to inflation. Obviously, the premium seats were worth more than $319.47, so they did have an increase outside or after inflation. Now, let's go ahead and determine what that true increase was. To do this, we're going to use that relative change rule that we learned in percentages. Now, in the percentages, we let our new value be the $325, and we let our old value be the $275. But as we stated earlier, the true value of those $275 should have been $319.47. So that is going to be our old value. Then we do some quick maths from our mathematizing module. And we can conclude that there was about a 2% increase in the premium seats and prices. So again, $319.47 is what the premium seats should have been worth in 2008 after inflation. Now, because there was an increase, what we have shown is that there was a 2% increase in these ticket prices. So is this more or less than the, price, than the increase in prices on everything else around that time period? What we're going to see is that this is actually less because items that are worth a lot they are not affected as much by inflation as items that are priced at a lower value. And that is where we arrive at our fact. Higher priced items are not affected as much by increases. And we'll get to see that in the next example. So now let's repeat this same process, but for the ordinary seats, so that we can, use this pro you can, we can practice using the CPI calculator and also see how much these lower priced items were affected by increases. Again, now we're asking the question of what is the true increase of the ordinary ticket prices? So we can go back to our CPI calculator. Now we're interested in the price of the ordinary seats from 2003. So that's the 4226. And again, we make sure that the year is set to 2008. The ordinary seats were, should be, have been worth $49.09 in 2008. So again, we can use our new minus old over old formula, where our new value is 
the true price of the ordinary seeds in 2008 minus their true worth of $49.09. And here we get 307 over 4909 and can conclude that the ordinary seeds experienced a 6.25% increase. Now, let's go back and look at our absolute change between the premium seats and the ordinary seats with or now knowing their true worth. Here the absolute change is about three dollars, three dollars and seven cents. For the premium tickets the absolute change was about six dollars. So although the premium seats uh, had a higher increase by absolute change in prices, we can see that the, the ordinary seats were a lot more affected by such increase because we had uh, those three dollars caused it, it to have a 6.25 percent increase. So again, this validates the fact from earlier that lower priced items are more affected by increases than premium, I mean, than higher priced items. Now, if we want to compare which deal is better in terms of which one was less affected by the increase, premium seats are a better deal. Now, if you really want to save money, you can just watch the games from home. I want to talk about another example that may resonate more with us. MacBook Pros, when I first bought my computer back when I started college, they were about $1,000. Now, MacBook Pro is about eleven dollars to $1,200. That increase of $200, $100 to $200 doesn't really seem much when you're already paying $1,000 for the computer. So it doesn't really deter people from buying those computers. Now, jeans. When I first started buying jeans at Inker Blue, they were $20. When I then had my own money later on and went to go buy jeans, jeans were on average $40 to $50. And if they were on sale, they were like $30. If they were first at $20 and then they increased by $20 to get to $40, that's a 100% increase. So I am less likely, likely to go buy it because the price doubled. Even though it was just a $20 increase versus the MacBook Pro example that experienced a $200 increase, the lower price item was more affected than the higher priced item. Now, we haven't explicitly stated the rule for inflation, but we used patterns or we used the rule that we already knew. The formal rule for inflation is the following. It's the current year amount divided by the previous year amount minus one. This formula or this rule should look familiar because in percentages we describe this as new minus uh, new divided by old minus one or as we used earlier new minus old over old. So although the way that we're writing the formula in words is different because the context changes the patterns still stay the same. When we want to find inflation we're looking for a relative change in prices. Now important topic to talk about, how does inflation affect us in our salaries? Let's look at an example. Suppose that you work at the 49er bookstore and you receive a 2% raise at the end of the year, but inflation rate for this year is 2.56%. How many more items can you buy compared to last year? Or how many less items can you buy or can you buy the same amount? Let's think about this. We don't have to do any math here because what we know is we had our salary and we received a 2% increase. Now all the products around us, bread, gas, housing, they received a 2.56% increase. So although you are bringing more money home with you, since everything else increased as well, we are not going to be able to buy the same amount of consumer goods as before because the increase of the goods due to inflation is going to be higher than the increase we received in our, on our salary. So this brings us to two little facts. First, if our raise is less than inflation, we have less buying power. If our raise is greater than inflation, that is when we're going to have more buying power. And you guessed it. In order for us to have these, the same buying power, then our raise should be equal to the inflation. So oftentimes we begin to question why is it that some people around us, although they have jobs, they may not be able to afford the housing that they live in or the same amount of food or things that you used to be able to afford. You may have experienced this yourself. Well, think of it this way. If inflation affects prices yearly, you should in theory be getting a raise yearly to at least match inflation. If you don't get a raise that matches inflation, 
then although you still have your same job, everything else has raised in value or it, the prices have raised, so you can no longer afford those same goods as before. Some food for thought next time you go talk to your boss. Now, while inflation affects the prices around us and our salaries, it increases the prices, but that also means that the value of the dollar is decreasing because we need to spend more money to buy the same things that we had that we were able to buy before. So let's look at an example where we get to practice uh, finding inflation and then explore how it has affected the value of the dollar. The inflation rate from 2016 to 2017 was 3%. From 2017 to 2018, it was 4%. Now suppose we're looking at an item from 2016 that was worth $100. Let's first find out how much it's going to cost in 2018. So again, just like we covered in percentages, we have our original price or our old value, and now we're going to be applying two rates to it and it's going to increase. So you guessed it, this is going to be exploring successive rates. Now the first rate was the inflation rate that we got at the end of 2017. The second one is the inflation rate that we got at the end of 2018. Then we can use our knowledge from the mathematizing module to expand and be able to determine our final answer. So we can expand the 1 plus 0.03 times the 1 plus 0.04 and we get 1 plus 0.04 plus 0.03 let us recall how we got this 0.0012. The three is in the hundredths place. The four is also in the hundredths place. So three hundredths times four hundredths is 12 ten thousandths because 100 times 100 is 10,000. Once we simplify, we arrive at the conclusion that the $100 priced item from 2016 is now worth $107 with 12 cents in 2018. From here, we can now explore the value of the dollar. So to analyze this, we're going to look at new over old. So this is the price from 2018 divided by the price from 2016, and we get 10712. So what does this mean in terms of the value of the dollar? That a dollar from 2018 is the same as 1.07, I'm using these units because of money, 1.07 times the amount of a dollar from 2016. So what this helps us see is that the dollar from 2016 is worth more than the dollar from 2018. You can also think of it as it, um, to the dollar from 2016 is equal to the dollars from 2018 divided by 1.07. So the money from the past has more value than the money from the present. If you've heard of bonds, these were like IOUs given from the government back when we had war, civil war, maybe World War II. But those bonds, imagine those $50 from the past or $10, they are now worth a lot more of the current money due to inflation. So although the price, the, the number that's representing that bond is small, its value is very large because it's so far in the past the more you know. So lastly, another topic that has to do with inflation is consumer price index. The CPI is the measure of the change in prices of consumer goods. So this is calculated monthly. They look at how much the price of gas has changed, housing has changed, food has changed. I recently moved out and I moved out at the end of May. That saved me $75 because the rent in June had an increase. So that is looking at the CPI. Now the rule for CPI that the Bureau of Labor Statistics uses to calculate it is the cost of the market basket in the given year divided by the cost of the market basket in the base year times 100. So again, this index is measuring a change and we can see this change, this rate in this formula. Now, just the fact, the Bureau of Labor Statistics uses the base year of 1982 to calculate the CPI. And for those of you going into government, maybe we can update this year because, you know, things have changed. Now, the cool thing about this is the CPI is a rate that looks at the change of prices. Again, that's inflation. So we can use the CPI to calculate inflation. Let's do an example together. We have the CPI for 2009 and we have the CPI for 2007. So we can look again using new minus old over new. I mean, over old, we can find what the inflation rate was from 2007 through 2009 by looking at the CPI, at the change in CPI. And once we do our math, 
from mathematizing module, we come to the conclusion that the overall inflation rate from 2007 to 2009 was 3.47%. I hope that you learned a lot from this video and you can go make informed choices about what you're going to go shopping for. Bye-bye <laughs> now.